Hi there folks, uh, so back for another video. Um, this time around, I think you can guess by what's on the screen uh, and the title that you've obviously read, um, I was hoping to dive into talking about some fantasy war games that I think are worth a shot. Um, obviously I've been talking about Warhammer quite a lot on the channel recently, but there are a lot, lot of other good fantasy war games out there and I just wanted to go through some of them. Uh, and just basically generally talk about what I like about them and why you should give them a go. Now this is going to kind of step away from the idea of mass battle games and be more about skirmishy stuff, but there is sort of one kind of oddball in there, which we'll have a look at. Uh, but uh, I thought this was a pretty good time to dive in and have a look at some of these, because some of these might be uh, a good entry point for those people that have maybe never really tried the fantasy genre before and want to give it a go. So we're going to start off with one here, which is uh, by Joseph McCullough. So Frostgrave is a game where you take control of a wizard, uh, as you can see there, uh, and then you have an apprentice, the fellow at the back there with the lovely beard, uh, and a collection of sort of hangers-on soldiers that will follow you into the ruined city of Felstad. Um, the idea of the game is that it's meant to be sort of a versus game, uh, although it can be played cooperatively and also can be played solo if you wish. And what you'll do in the game is you will play out uh, scenarios similar to the likes of More Time. If you've not seen More Time, make sure you go and check out my video on that. Um, where you will make a warband, make a gang, uh, led by your particular wizard, uh, or even potentially a martial hero. And then you'll be trying to uncover treasures and all sorts of different things within the ruins of Felstad, which is the frozen city of legend and myth. Um, when you play the games, you play the games with a wizard going up against another wizard and their warband, uh, but there will also be the chance to run into wandering monsters like skeletons and demons and all sorts of different things. Um, the game has expanded pretty uh, drastically over the last few years. Um, it had the first edition, uh, but it's now moved on to the second edition from Joseph McCullough. A lot of the uh, first edition supplements are still completely compatible with the second edition, which is great to know. There's just a few tweaks here and the there that you might need to do. Um, but for the most part, the game is actually completely compatible with that. And they really sort of tweak things and made things a lot easier to play uh, in the second edition of the game. Um, as I say, it's a really good, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, as you can see here from the web store, there is a lot for you to choose from. Um, when it comes to gaming, all effectively you need to do is buy the, the rule book, which you see there, and then maybe buy one of the soldier sets that works for you, uh, or buy quite a few of them, and then you can buy a whole section of wizards, as you can see here. You can either buy them as plastic kits, or you can buy them as uh, metal models, if you prefer, based on the various expansions. Um, Frostgrave is one of those games that, that has captured everybody's attention and is popular for a reason. Um, it's really fun to play. Uh, it uses a d20 as the main dice in the game, uh, which means that it's got a kind of role play feel to it, which I think is quite nice. Um, the fact that it also works with um, in a versus context, or in co-op, or in solo, means that it's one of those games that you can dive into and have a lot of fun with. Um, one of the nice things about this game, and also the game that we're going to talk about after this, um, that you may have seen in the in the in the page before, is that um, they really uh, sort of push the collector's gene, as it were. Um, so if you're interested in picking up void and wonderful monsters from different creators, then you can obviously do that, which is really cool. Uh, and uh, it it allows you to make interesting terrain and all sorts of different things like that. Um, it's also obviously got that progression element to it as well. Um, so when you dive into Frostgrave, your wizards and their, your soldiers, or specifically your wizards, don't really stay the same throughout. They grow in power and stature and all that kind of thing. So you'll see an unfolding narrative play out in your games. Now, if you are one for narrative, then one of the other games that is also by Joseph McCullough, that I'm showing up here, um, he's quite the master of these kind of skirmish uh, games, sorry, is... Um, Rangers of Shadow Deep. Now, Rangers of Shadow Deep uh, is set in a entirely different fantasy universe, where you play as warbands of rangers, as you can see here, giving off a very sort of Aragorn Strider vibe, that have been sent into this darkness, the Shadow Deep, in order to uncover strange plots and all sorts of different things like that. <laughs> now, the thing that's interesting about um, Rangers of Shadow Deep is. It's effectively a solo war game, um, a solo skirmish game. You will take control of a ranger, who is your main character, 
and then they will have a selection of um, sort of hangers on that you will make uh, a sort of um, uh, the NPCs within your party. Imagine them as the side characters in a, in a movie or something. And when you play the game, you will go through a set of specific scenarios in the game. You don't build things up randomly, although of course you could do. You follow a storyline throughout the, um, the, the books uh, and uncover more mysteries as you go. Um, the game again uses a d20. Uh, I'm just going to oh, shadow deep and show this off as we're going. There is a lot of different books for you to choose from. Let's see if we can find it. Here we go. So, um, as you can see, Range of the Shadow Deep has a lot of spin offs <laughs> from Joseph McCullough. He has done a lot of different books that you can see here uh, that go through um, various adventures that you'll. Um, uh, that you'll undertake as your ranger. Um, it's a really fun game. Again, it allows you to dive in and sort of explore um, character development and all that kind of thing and, and really get that kind of role-playing side of things onto the tabletop. Um, I love that scenarios can play out very differently depending on how you approach them. There's a little deck that you use, deck of cards that which reveals the encounters that you come up against and the treasures that you find. Um, and the game plays very brutal and nasty, whilst also being uh, sort of uh, cool and fantasy at the same time. And there's some really fun scenarios in here. Um, this is the kind of game that I really want to try and dive into and play. Um, one of the interesting things about both Rangers of Shadow Deep and uh, Frostgrave as well is that while they may be collectory style games where you want to collect a lot of terrain and, uh, and miniatures in order to represent the different monsters that you fight, um, they're actually quite small and compact. You're only probably going to be playing them on tables that are around three foot, three three by three, four by four, um, which is obviously good for those people that don't have a lot of space. Um, the other thing that's nice about the games is that you can collect for the scenarios you're going to play. So, for example, if you were diving into uh, Range of Shadow Deep and you're going to play the first quest, then you know you just need some zombies, three houses, and some woods. So what you do as a, as a player, or maybe if you're doing this cooperatively, because you can't play it cooperatively, you'd um, you know pick up a couple of different houses, either 3D printing them or buy them in MDF or whatever, uh, uh, get them all painted up, get the zombies painted up, and then play that mission. And then you'd be able to collect for the next one, and then maybe in a couple of weeks, come and sit down and play that with your friends, which I think is really awesome. Um, so it allows you to sort of slowly build up a collection of things that will then allow you to dive into bigger and and, and, and um, bolder fantasy games later on down the line. Uh, the next game that I want to talk about is one that kind of steps outside of the bonds of uh, fantasy war games. or well, fantasy skirmish games anyway. And this is Sludge. So Sludge is a very different style of fantasy-esque, dark fantasy game, I guess you'd say, uh, from Sean Sutter of Metal King Studios. Uh, Sludge is a game which is set in a dark and twisted sort of black powdery fantasy world where guns and sort of um, black powder Napoleonic pike and shot style weaponry mashes with swords and sorcery and all that kind of thing. Um, the world of Sludge is one that is sort of ruined uh, and as they say here, the doom age of black powder. Um, and it, it's one of those um, games which enables you to really dive in and have a lot of fun with the uh, modeling side of things. It's a little bit bigger in scope than the two games we've seen before. Previously to this, a warband for Frostgrave is not going to be bigger than 10 models. Definitely not going to be bigger than 10 models for Ranger Shadow Deep. Moving over to something like Sludge, you're looking at armies that are around this size if you wanted to start diving and get going with it. But I think one of the nice things about this one and the reasons that I wanted to highlight it as kind of like a little bit of a weird sort of side option is that it's all about um, mixing and matching and twisting and turning miniatures uh, into the kind of armies that you want to use in the game. Um, it, it's one of those games where the fantasy is in there, but it's also got lots of elements of historical, and it uh, it really is built for kit bashers, which I think is really nice. So, for example, if you've been collecting historical miniatures uh, from the Perry Twins, for example, or Warlord Games or Victrix, you can use those to build up your armies for Sludge, 
with just the addition of a couple of fancy elements, maybe using some of those Frostgrave kits that we were looking at previous that came in plastic and all that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's one of those that I think is really nice for those people who want to be a little bit more inventive with their um, collections. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people who will, will approach fantasy from the idea of, oh, I just want to play the game, but a lot of people will join, will join the, the sphere and the genre from the point of view of, I really want to uh, have fun with the modelling element of the hobby. I think the sludges are definitely the one that you want to go for. Um, the rules for sludge are available uh, in, as part of the Blaster magazine, although you can uh, get your hands on them there as well, so that is cool. Blaster magazine is a very good read if you want to read that as well. <laughs> uh, but also Black Sight Studios, who we're going to look at in a second as well, also do a range of miniatures to go alongside them. Um, and as you can see, it's one of those really fun games that um, uh, is a little bit different from the norm, I think, uh, which is which is why it's so important. I should also note that um, Sean Sutter also made um, Radic Blade, which is a really good <laughs> fantasy skirmish game. Um, which is distinctly more high fantasy and sort of taps into uh, traditional kind of like archetypes and that kind of thing from sort of uh, older skirmish war games and that kind of stuff which is really nice very again very heavily inspired by the likes of Mordheim and, game, and games of that ilk um, but yeah uh, Sludge is one there if you're a little bit more of a hobbyist I think that you might want to go and check out and give it a go uh, moving on from that uh, we have a Moonstone. Uh, so Moonstone is a game that um, I've not played myself, but uh, I know a lot of people who are really, really into it. Moonstone comes from Goblin King Games, and um, it's a game that is so inherently whimsical that it will have you squeeing when you see all the little bits and pieces for it. Um, the world of Moonstone is a really fascinating one where you're going to be creating troops of uh, characters that are going out to hunt down the elusive Moonstone, as you might have guessed, and also battle each other for territory and all sorts of different things in the narrative and that kind of thing. One of the nice things about Moonstone as well is that it's very free and open and flowing. Um, it's a game where when you dive into it, you kind of build a troop based off of the models that you like um, around a sort of like a very basic structure uh, that focuses in on uh, particular factions within the game. So maybe you wanted to dive in and play as just all bunnies. Well, you can do that. You can use Boris the Bunny Summoner, which is really awesome. Um, and then the game itself actually runs through the use of um, of, uh, of cards rather than it being uh, dice-driven, which is always a nice thing as well. And that'll be another element of a game that we're going to look at soon as well. Um, the game is very fun and quirky and weird. Uh, it features models that are a little bit more on the uh, a little bit on the larger side. Uh, these are around thirty-two millimeter models uh, for these ones here, um, and they're but they're very detailed and they're very very nice. Um, the game can be played with just two players, or you can play it up to four players as well, as you can see there too, which is really nice. Um, and it's one of those games that is just so incredibly whimsical that I don't think you could. You know, <laughs> I don't think you could be uh, you could be drawn away if you started looking at it. I mean, this is the kind of the loose breakdown of the different um, sort of uh, factions that you'll find in the game. For example, you've got the fawns there, which I think are fantastic if you want to go down the fairy route. I mean, one of the nice things about this is that it's just so different from everything else out there. Uh, but it's a really, really nice uh, game that is, you know, fairly cheap to get into in reality because you only need a couple of things and you play it on very small tabletops once again. Uh, these are the fairies and stuff as well. Really cool, amazing stuff there. Um, I, th I think I'm very much drawn to the uh, the fawns, although there has to be something said about the giants and trolls in the games. You've got some really quirky stuff here. Uh, and uh, the guy behind it, Tom, is a really nice person as well. So uh, definitely want to go and check out. If you want to support, support something a little bit smaller uh, that also sort of focuses in, in, in on uh, the joy of painting these miniatures because uh, the, they, you can spend a lot of time tinkering with these to make them fantastic. Um, but yeah, some cool stuff there for Moonstone. The next one of these games we're going to talk about uh, is something that's a little bit different. and It's not actually out yet. It's coming uh, in, in the beginning of June. So Yafsiga. Uh, comes from the folks at Black Sight Studios. Uh, the game of Yafsiga is one set in a sort of dark fantasy world where a strange cosmic force 
called the bloom has sort of descended upon the the world and effectively ruined it and so what you do as your warmans is you are heading off into this bloom uh, in order to find strange secrets and treasures, reclaim territory back for your particular kingdom of choice, or simply just for the thrill of adventure. You will build a warband, similar to um, a lot of other war games, like Frostgrave and, and, uh, and more time and that kind of thing. Uh, but then what you'll do is uh, games are then played out on two by two spaces, which I think is really good. So you play the game out on a two by two space, and um, interestingly for me, uh, the game sort of encourages uh, sort of role play style combat as well. Um, it, because your warbands are so small and the play space is so small, it's all very much driven by the narrative. A card deck is drawn uh, is drawn from at the beginning of the game, which sets up the deployments, your objectives, twists, and then also sort of like side schemes that will pop up throughout the game as well, which is really nice. The game is also run by cards, um, so you will make an ace, king, jack, and queen, uh, queen and jack, sorry, for your particular characters and uh, soldier groups within the game and you use those to activate them but then the rest of the game is driven by the rest of the card deck so you'll split up all the red cards and the black cards for either side and then that central set of cards uh, so all the other cards the numbered ones in the game uh, are then used to do all of your tests which i think is really fun uh, the game's coming out quite soon again it's very much one of those that it's it's miniature agnostic in the sense that you could pick up whatever you wanted but uh, the guys at black site are actually going to be doing a range of miniatures as you see here to use in your games which i think are looking quite nice um uh, I, i'm definitely tempted to go and pick up this kind of starter set that's coming out from these guys uh, as i think this could be a really fun game to dive into and have a go at so you know we've got a, a couple of games that are sort of well cemented in the, the zeitgeist we've got one that's a little bit quirky and a little bit sort of based around modeling rather than it being solely about the idea of playing just the game effectively uh, you've had the very quirky painter's joy that is moonstone and then you have something that's on the way which is you have uh it would also be remiss of me not to talk about burrows and badges um burrows and badges from michael lovejoy uh is a really fun fantasy skirmish game for those people who are fans of anthropomorphic animals red wall and those kind of books by brian yaks jakes sorry back in the day um the idea behind uh uh, Burrows and Badges is very similar as a, as to, to a lot of these sort of warband style games. You will make a warband of creatures uh, based around a particular faction, and then you will go through specific uh, objectives, maybe or or maybe you even you'll even dive into larger campaigns because there's one that's come out uh, in the last couple of years called the Warren Percy Affair, and you'll play through those and you'll tell the story of your of your group. Now, unlike something like Frostgrave, where it's just your wizard that expands and grows and uh, expands in power and grows. Um, in Burrows and Badgers, all of your characters could change and adapt and grow over time and become uh, more powerful and tell their own story, which I think is really fun. Uh, the game also features amazing miniatures uh, in both metal and uh, resin. Most of them are one piece as well. In fact, actually, I think every single one of the models is one piece, which makes them really, really good because you just stick them down to a, 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 a base and get painting straight away, which is which is sublime. Um, I've played a couple. I've played loads of games of this over the over the last couple of years, uh, and it is genuinely one of the most um, uh, charming ranges of miniatures out there. Uh, whilst also being um, a really really good game, uh, the game uses a whole set of poly dice um, for your games. So stats are based on dice rather than them being um, a particular number. Uh, and so when you do a test, you're going to be running against each other using your various poly dice. And whoever gets the highest, and the difference between those is uh, whoever gets the highest will win. Obviously, and the difference between those is what damage you'll take, and that kind of stuff as well. There's a lot more intricacies in there as well, but we'll, we'll get to that if we talk more about Burrows and Badges in the future. Um, but one of the nice things about it is uh, is is that um, it's it's full of really nice 
extra stuff to help your characters. So there's loads of skills that you can draw in in the game. All the weapons are very different and varied, and they all feel like the weapons they should be. Um, there's also some really nice sort of like twists of fate in there. So there's ways to mitigate luck with rerolls and all that kind of thing, or adding extra dice. And then there's also uh, this really fun thing where when you, if you hit the max of your dice, you get a plus to it as well. So that means that even the lowliest mouse, who's maybe only rolling a d4 or a d6 for their strikes against a, a big towering badger, um, could actually do a lot more damage to them if they get lucky, which I think is really nice. So it's got some really good stuff in there for the plucky individuals as they dive into the game and have fun with it. Um, but yeah, so that's another one I wanted to check out. You can buy all of that stuff from the Oath Sworn website, as you can see here. Um, the Burrows and Badgers section has um, grown substantially over the last while. Um, you can buy lots of individual miniatures, again, very cheap. Uh, but one of the ways I would dive in and give it a go is get yourself the rulebook from Oath, Oath Sworn. Um, again, particularly cheap. And then just buy maybe one or two of these starter warbands and start playing with your friends. Um, it's it's a great way to get going in the game, and I think it's another one of those ones that um, I think people uh, tend to overlook it because it's so different with the anthropomorphic animals. But I think once you get into it, you get a real sense of uh, fun when you paint these miniatures because they're all so different. They're not humans. Um, you're diving in and playing around with really interesting ideas for fur textures and colours and all that kind of thing. And whilst the game has some very bright and poppy characters within it, there's actually a sort of grim twist to a lot of this stuff as well. Uh, so if you wanted to go down that route and be a little bit more grim with your miniatures in Burrows and Magic, you definitely can do, which I think is really fun. So you can do sort of Watership Downy style blood and guts and fire if you really wanted to. Uh, but yeah, some really awesome stuff there. Uh, but yeah. That's just, a, I was only going to pick five, but then I wanted to put in Sludge as a sort of quirky additional option. Uh, but there's a couple of fantasy war games that I think are definitely worth a shot um, uh, and, and worth you diving into to have a look at. Um, Frostgrave is the one that is obviously really well supported at the moment. You can get that from Osprey and North Star. Rangers of Shadow Deep, uh, available from North Star on over, and over on Drive Through RPG. Uh, from Joseph McCullough, that's all self-published effectively, although um, it, the book is also available from the likes of Modiphius and North Star as well if you prefer. Um, Sludge by Sean Sutter, much more focused on the hobby element of things, but also a very good game as well, set in a very sort of different fantasy world from the norm. Uh, you've got Moonstone, which is the incredibly whimsical fantasy game, again driven by cards and card play. Uh, where you can kind of make things up as you go, which I think is really nice. Uh, and again, features beautiful models that are a wonder to paint and a little bit bigger. Yaf Seeger, which is coming out in the near future from the folks at Black Sight. Uh, again, a really fun concept. Love that it plays on a smaller space, lots of terrain, really cool miniatures, um, and uh, a very interesting concept with the fact of taking out the dice and just using the card mechanic from the poker deck if it wanted to run things. And then Burrows and Badgers, which I, I think is probably my favorite fantasy war game, skirmish game of all time, really, uh, which uses your Red Wall-esque um, an animal miniatures, your anthropomorphic heroes, to do battle and build up your warbands over time. Uh, some fun games to come and check out there. I think um, if you have any other suggestions for fantasy skirmish games, make sure to drop them below. Uh, this is by no means the... Um, <laughs> The, uh, the exhaustive list. This is just some of the ones that I wanted to pick out and share with you that I think would be pretty good for newcomers, I think, uh, coming at it from different angles, uh, especially if they enjoy different sort of facets of the hobby. Uh, but yeah, drop them down below. Um, I'll have also all the links that I've been showing off here in the description down below as well, so make sure to go and check those out. And as always, uh, if you could drop some comments, if you could drop some likes and some shares, that would be amazing. Sharing this on social media and getting this out there with other people would be really, really good. Um, so if you do like the video, please don't hesitate to uh, grab the link and share it on social media via Facebook groups or Twitter uh, or, or wherever you wanted to share it. Uh, and there is also, again, that Ko-fi link down there as well in the description. Um, if you fancy, if you like what I do and you want to sort of help me out by buying me a cup of tea and keeping me going, see I've got my cup of tea with me already at the moment, <laughs> always got a cup of tea on hand, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to dive in and give me uh, a little bit of um, extra moolah. But you do not have to. Uh, just liking, sharing and subscribing is the best way for me to uh, 
just enjoy the process of sharing these videos with everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some interesting things in the near future, hopefully. Um, a couple of uh, quirky things that are a bit sort of off the book, maybe, as well as diving back into some sort of um, weirder stuff from the past. I really want to talk about my first book, uh, well, not my first book, my first magazine from uh, from White Dwarf, uh, which I might do in the near future. So watch out for that. Um, because that one's really fun. And I think it'd be good to go through that uh, that old White Dwarf that I poured over for so many months. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back with more videos in the future. Uh, do the awkward look to the side as I get ready to stop the recording. Uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Uh, and yeah, get some comments down below about the kind of fantasy war games that you enjoy playing. Bye for now.